Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Harim Jafar Hamarashid, uh, School of Dentistry, University of Suleimani. I'm lecturer at uh, Periodontal Department. Today my lecture is about the smoking and its effect on periodontal disease. As you know that smoking is highly prevalent and, and can be considered as an epidemic in both developed and developing nations. Smoking is harmful to almost every organ in the body and is associated with multiple disease with multiple diseases, reducing the expectancy and quality of life. Diseases associated with the smoking include lung cancer, heart disease, stroke, emphysema, bronchitis, and cancers of the oral cavity, bladder, kidney, stomach, liver, and cervix. Approximately half of the long-term smoker will die, will die yearly on an account of smoking. And those who die before the age of 17 70 will lose on average around 20 years of life. Most deaths from smoking are due to lung cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and coronary heart disease. Tobacco smoke contains thousands of noxious chemicals and comprises a gaseous phase and a solid particle phase. All dental patients must be asked about their smoking status both of current and former smokers should be asked about the types and the amount and the time of starting the smoking and quitting so as you know as uh, that periodontal disease is defined as inflammatory destruction of periodontal tissue and alveolar supporting bone surrounding the teeth. Progression and severity of the disease depends on complex interactions between several risk factors such as microbial, immunological, environmental, and genetic factors as well, as well as age, sex, and race. So periodontal disease is a multifactorial disease. The main cause is bacteria and many risk factors associated with the progression of the periodontitis or gingivitis. <clears throat> this diagram will uh, show you that the effect of smoking and other factors on the periodontal diseases. It shows you that when a specific pathogen like bacteria enter your body it acts as an antigen and your body will respond by forming antibody and uh, sending the polymorphonucleus as a first line defense to the area of the antigen presence so the host immune inflammatory response is initiated and it, it will secrete cytokines which will initiate the prostaglandin E2 and matrix metalloproteinase. And these two are responsible for connective tissue and bone metabolism. The prostaglandin E2 is responsible for bone metabolism and matrix metalloproteinase for connective tissue metabolism. And by that, when it's ha it happened, the clinical expression of disease and progression will be initiated. In this path, the genetic factor, genetic factor, and other environmental factors such as smoking, is uh, tightly associated with the immune response and the effects of the cytokines and uh, prostaglandin and matrix metal matrix metalloproteinase on the body so the the smoking here acts as a main environmental factor or acquired factor so this is one of the main risk factors associated with the periodontitis or periodontal disease as whole 
Epidemiologic evidence shows that cross-sectional and case control studies demonstrate a moderate to strong association between smoking and periodontal disease. Smokers are four times as likely to develop periodontitis as non-smokers. Smoking may be responsible for more than half of the periodontal, periodontal disease among adults and up to 90% of refractory periodontitis, which is a type of periodontitis that doesn't respond to any time, type of treatments, those who are smokers. Most of age associated with the smoking, women from age 20 to 39, and men from age 30 to 59, who smoke cigarettes have twice the chance of having periodontal disease or becoming edentulous than the non-smoker do. The effect of smoking on periodontal status to be more pronounced in younger women. Why? Because may be associated with the hormonal change, which is another risk factor. And, and it, it multiplies the progression of the disease and uh, it will act as a synergistic effect for progression of the periodontitis or gingivitis. <clears throat> there are thousands of chemicals said that 4,000 chemicals are present <clears throat> which are all of them are harmful in the cigarette smoking. and all harm the bodies. The main components of the cigarettes are nicotine, carbon monoxide and tar, all of which cause diseases. The nicotine action is by retarding the growth of gingival fibroblast and reduces fibrinoctin and collagen and increases breakdown collagen and rise in the blood pressure it will cause high hypertension and increased heart and respiratory rates and it will cause peripheral vasoconstriction. Regarding the effect of smoking on the plug, several studies demonstrated higher level of oral debris in smoker than in non-smoker. And this increased level of, sm of plug uh, in a patient who, who smoke is maybe attributed to personality traits leading to decreased oral hygiene habits and increased rates of plaque formation or a combination of both. The effect of smoking on gingiva first of all reduction of the gingival inflammation and reduction of bleeding and probing due to vasoconstriction which is the effect of nicotine. The effect of smoking on periodontitis, first of all, it increases the prevalence and severity of periodontal destruction and increases the pocket depth, attachment loss, and bone loss. Furthermore, it will increase the prevalence of severe periodontitis and tooth loss with increase the number of cigarette smoking per day. And finally, it will decrease the prevalence and severity with smoking cessation. So with cessation, it will decrease the prevalence and severity of the periodontal disease. The microbiological effect of smoking on periodontal disease is like as follows. There is increase in the level of periodontal pathogen in the deep periodontal pocket and increase the colonization of shallow periodontal pockets by the periodontal pathogen. And the proportion of subjects positive for actinobacillus, actinomycetum comitans, P. gingivalis, and T. forsythis were higher among, among the smokers. Also smoking will enhance the increasing account of exogenous flora like Escherichia coli and Candida albicans. 
all of which are reported in smokers. The immunological effect of smoking on the periodontal disease, first of all, is impaired chemotaxis and phagocytosis activity of neutrophils, polymorphonucleus, and reduction in the production of the antibodies essential for killing the bacteria, especially IgG2, and increase in the production of tumor necrosis factor A and prostaglandin E2 and neutrophic collagenase and elastase in the gingival clavicular fluid. The physiological effect of smoking on the periodontal disease are, first of all, decreasing the gingival blood vessels and bleeding or probing with increased inflammation. So it will obscure the sign and symptoms of the disease. Second, decrease the gingival crevicular fluid flow with increased inflammation. And the presence of gingival crevicular flow is very important as an immunological flu fluid to protect the gingiva and soft, the soft tissue and hard tissue. And there is decrease in some gingival temperature showing less inflammatory gingiva and increase in time needed to recover from local anesthesia. The effects of smoking on periodontal therapy are first of all the non-surgical therapy it decreases the clinical response to root surface debridement it will decrease the pocket depth reduction also decrease the gain in clinical attachment level and increase the neck decrease the negative impact of smoking with increased level of plug control as much as you control your plug the impact of the ne negative impact of smoking will increase while its effect surgical therapy on the surgical therapy are decrease the pocket depth reduction and decrease gain in clinical attachment le level after excess flap surgery Increase deterioration of furcations after surgery and decrease gain in clinical attachment level. Decrease bone fill, increase recession and increase membrane exposure after guided tissue regeneration. It will decrease root coverage after grafting procedure for localized gingival recession. It decrease pocket depth reduction after bone graft procedure and increase risk for implant failure and peri-implantitis. In the maintenance phase, while you follow your patient for any improvements, in the smoker patient, you find that there is increased pocket depth and attachment loss. Also, there is decreased recurrence in smokers. Increased disease recurrence in smoker and increased need for retreatment in smoker. Also, increased tooth loss in smoker after surgical therapy. The most important thing, as you know that the, the major risk factor of periodontal disease is smoking. So the dentist should spend time on smoking cessation with, this, with his patient. So, there's a 5 A's and 4 D's. First, ask about tobacco use. The second A is advise to quit. The third A is assess the willingness to make a quit attempt. And fourth A is assist in quit attempt. And fifth A is is arranged for follow-up and for the nicotine withdrawal the four D's drink water slowly deep breathe do something else ex example exercises 
and the 4D is delay acting on the urge to smoke. Finally, we should know that in a conclusion that smoking results in dramatic increase of periodontitis and increase the likelihood of poor response to periodontal therapy. Non-surgical therapy can be successful in smokers if excellent oral hygiene is achieved, but surgical treatments including implant placement all have decreased favorable outcomes in smokers. Smokers have less gingivitis and bleeding on probing, so it's more difficult to, to detect attachment loss and bone destruction. Thus, it's imperative that comprehensive pocket depth recording and full mouth radiograph accompany their periodontal examination. Dental clinicians have a unique and obligatory responsibility to inform smokers of their susceptibility to advance periodontal destruction and poor response to surgical procedures. The demonstration of specific smoking-related periodontal problems is often the first salutary inform information that the patient accepts concerning the body's del deleterious reaction to smoking. This can trigger a desire for quitting smoking and the dental team has a special role in initiating smoking cessation. Nicotine replacement therapy and behavior modification approach generally have a 20% success rate. The addition of systemic medications such as bupropion and varniclene may, be, may add another 10% of quitter at one year. But because of the occasional serious side effects like, see, like seizure, arrhythmias, tachycardias, depression, and suicidality, it is suggested that these agents may be best used under the direction of physician. Smoking cessation should precede periodontal surgical intervention, and if patients continue to smoke, clinicians may consider limiting periodontal treatment to non-surgical approaches accompanied by rigorous short interval two to three month maintenance visits until smoking cessation. Thanks for your listening.